In this video, we're going to take this DIY electric bike and convert it to Milwaukee powered. So stick with me and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So as I mentioned, I have this old Sears three-wheeled bike that I converted into an electric bike uh, using a an eBay bought uh, electric wheel from China and it came with a 36 volt battery and control unit from China. Well, this year I went to go charge it up and it uh, wouldn't, it said it was fully charged but I'd get no juice up to the controller there. Uh, I'd wiggle some things and sometimes I'd get juice, sometimes I wouldn't, so I took it apart. I'll show you what we're dealing with over here on the bench. So I wound up taking the, the battery pack apart and um, I tested to see where I was at. So I did find out I did have 36 volts, 36 plus volts in here. Um, so it did take a charge the last time I put it away. But, um, you know, just testing here, I got 36 volts. On this side, I've only got 31 volts. So right here is my charging circuit, okay? Um, so I dilly-dallied around with it with my, volti with my multimeter, um, testing different chips, voltage at different locations. And I have 36 volts in certain spots, 31 volts in other spots. Um, I didn't see any cold solder joints. But we do have a lot of surface mount stuff on here, so I'm not quite sure where the problem is, but something is wrong in this uh, board here. Um, I also discovered I could bypass this charging circuit to get 36 volts out the other side. So I could run it that way, but I wouldn't be able to get it to charge. Um, so that puts you in you know an awkward position. So what I'm actually going to do is convert it to Milwaukee powered. I have a plethora of 9 amp hour Milwaukee batteries that are at 18 volts. So I got some of these adapters here. There's a guy online that uh, 3D prints these. I've bought several of these, but basically it's just a, it taps into the plus and minus in your Milwaukee battery, and it has some wires here. So I'm going to wire two of those together in series to get my 36 volts. Now I did bench test this. I uh, set up two of my Milwaukee's on my bike over there and just ran some jumpers and wires down to the control unit and it did power it up and run it and I took it for a, a spin in the backyard and it seemed to have just as much power as this guy did. Um, from what I gather on this it has around 10, 10 to 12 amp hours. My Milwaukee's got nine so I don't run it for that amount of time that long amount of time so that should work out. So what I'm going to do is show you how I'm going to set up and do this and then uh, we'll do a test run. So uh, stay tuned. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I found a piece of, uh, looks like a one by six laying around here in the shop. So um, I'm going to just line it up on the edges here, pull it as far forward as I can so I can have you know, good access to my buttons here, um, space this stuff out, and then mark it and cut it off right there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off, and I'll show you what I'm going to use for screws once I get that all, uh, all set and ready to go. All right, so here's how we're gonna mock this up here. I've got it all measured out here. I got my center marks. Obviously, I'm gonna put two on the end. So what I failed to mention in the last clip is I'm mocking up three of these because uh, two of them are gonna be for, for the drive in series. And the third one, um, I'm already using Milwaukee to power the headlight on it. So I'm gonna have the third one mounted on here for the headlight. So that, that's what I got going on here. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and use these number 10 three quarter inch wood screws that fit perfectly through these holes here and that should give me plenty of holding power on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw those all down and show you when we're done. All right, so I've got two of them screwed down. I'm only gonna use two screws in there um, each. Um, this one I mocked up where the holes needed to be so they're ready. I won't mount that one until I get over to the uh, bike because that one's been hardwired in already. Um, so now what I'm going to do is um, shorten up my wires here um, and connect the positive to the negative on the one side. So we're going to have um, you know, the negative free to go to the negative on my controller. These two wired together in series and then my negative free over here so that will give me my 36 volts in series. So I'm going to go ahead and snip these two wires down and um, show you how I'm going to put them together here. Um, I've got some quick solder connections that I'm going to show you how those work if you've never used them. They actually work really good. So uh, give me a moment. I'll mock that up and explain to you how those work. All right, so here's what we're going to use to solder this together here. So I mentioned, uh, you know, quick connect solder fittings here. So here's what we got. Uh, it's basically a piece of shrink tubing. So the blue bands shrink tight along with the rest of the plastic or rubber or whatever the material this is, vinyl. Um, and then in the middle here, we have some low temp solder. So you, you uh, strip the ends of your wire, um, stick them both in the middle there, and you heat it up with a heat gun, and it melt the solder melts on and melts it together. So um, here I've got mine mocked up. Um, you can see I snipped the ends of the wire. 
um, I kind of flared out the wire a little bit, um, and when I so that when I stuck it in there, they they intertwined, so that way you get a better uh, solder joint when this thing uh, when this thing heats up. So I got this kit like I don't know, probably five years ago. Uh, I think I saw it on Facebook, and I was a little skeptical at first. It looked too good to be true, but um, I figured for you know fifteen bucks, what the heck, why not? And uh, these have been great. You can see it comes with all different sizes depending on what wire you're putting together, and they're real quick and easy. Um, it makes a good tight fit, real strong. I haven't had any failures with them, so um, it's a pretty good investment. So uh, if you're looking for you know something good and cheap to use, uh, this is how you do it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my heat gun here, and uh, I'm going to heat this up and show you how that works. You just heat it up until everything shrinks down nice, and you're going to see that solder melt. And then um, once you see the solder melt and get intertwined in there, then you just uh, leave it be. Let it cool off. So here we go. That looks like we got a bond there, so we'll let that cool off a few minutes here. Then we'll go ahead and give her the old tug test, so uh, stay tuned. All right, things have cooled off here, so yeah, we can go ahead and give her the old tug. She's nice and firm. Um, off camera, I went ahead and I snipped the leads off of my old battery pack here. I left them kind of long in case I do want to try to fix this someday, but for now we're going to see how this goes. So then I, I did the same thing here. I took my leads and I... I'm using my quick solder connections there too, so those are all nice and firm. So now we'll uh, head over to the bike and give, plug her in and give her a test, see how she works. So stay tuned. All right, we're over at our bike here. Um, I've plugged in my leads to my controller here. Uh, no sparks, nothing's getting hot, so that's a good sign. So now we'll go ahead and push in our power button, see what happens here. She lights up and says that she has full power. All right, let's give her some throttle and see what happens. Well, have enough power to rip some rubber off and uh, create a little smoke. So, hey, I think that's a win. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get our light battery mounted on here and make sure our light still works, and uh, we'll show you how that looks. All right, I've got my three battery packs mounted up. I uh, will go ahead and flip on our light switch here and see how our lights work. Boom! All right, I guess I should tell you guys, my primary use for this thing is for hunting, for going out to the deer stand. Um, I'm not one to get sweated up walking out to the deer stand, so I use the basket on the back to carry out um, some things, and I cruise along on this. I've used that the last three years. It works pretty good. Um, so the only thing I have to do is uh, put the batteries inside the pouch there and go for a test ride. But uh, unfortunately, it's raining cats and dogs right now, so that'll have to happen tomorrow. So I will uh, catch you up when I do that, and we'll see how it all works. Stay tuned. All right, here we are actually two days later because it rained all day yesterday, and we're going to give this bad boy a test drive in the yard. So uh, let's hop on and see what happens. Pardon the uh, noise, it's really windy today, so not much I can do about that, so let's see. Power on, and hit the throttle, see what happens. Not pedaling, all electric powered. Ooh. Hill now, doing pretty good.
works pretty good. Thanks for watching.